A student, let us talk about the techniques of mandibular anesthesia. We have the open mouth technique like in the inferior nerve block, lingual nerve block, buccal nerve block, Gugate's technique, mental nerve block, incision nerve block, open mouth technique. Closed mouth technique is Vazirani Akinosi nerve block. We are coming to inferior nerve block. The very frequently nerve block after the infiltration IENB is the second most frequently used nerve block. However, if you don't give it properly, it has a high chance of failure as well. Buccal nerve block is needed when soft tissue anesthesia to the posterior buccal region is necessary like in mandibular molars. A pedial injection might be necessary when isolated portion of mandibular teeth, usually the mesial root of mandibular first molar remains sensitive in otherwise successful INB. Intraosseous anesthesia is a supplemental technique usually on molar when INB has proven ineffective primarily when the tooth is pulpally involved. You can see the IA nerve block is anesthetizing the following nerves inferior nerve, incisor nerve, mental nerve and the lingual nerve. So area anesthetized with the inferior nerve block you can see here all the yellow portion, mandibular teeth to the midline, body of the mandible, inferior portion of the ramus, buccal mucoperiosteum, mucous membrane anterior to mental foramen, anterior two thirds of the tongue, floor of nasal cavity, lingual soft tissue and periosteum, lingual nerve. Along with this all the mandibular teeth they are anesthetized here buccal side. Technique, very important. The technique for the inferior alveolar nerve block is position. The technique students of inferior alveolar nerve block, which is very important, the conventional method or the Halstead method, we say. So, firstly, you position the patient in a supine or semi supine position and ask him to her to open, keep mouth wide open. 35 gauge long needles recommended. Area of insertion will be on the mucous membrane on the medial side of the ramus. Target area is target inferior alveolar nerve just before it enters the mandibular foramen. Landmarks, we have following landmarks, coronite notch, pterygomandibular raphe, occlusal plane of mandibular posterior teeth, mucobuccal fold, anterior border of ramus of mandible, external oblique ridge, retromandibular triangle, internal oblique ridge, pterygomandibular ligament, buccal sucking pad and pterygomandibular space. To locate the insertion point, for this you have three parameters. Firstly, you should know the height of injection, then what will be the placement of needle anteroposteriorly, and what will be the depth of penetration. Needle insertion is at the point of intersection of the horizontal and the vertical line. Approach the insertion point from the corner of the mouth from the opposite side. Insert the needle when bone contacted, withdraw the needle 1 millimeter, aspirate and deposit 1.5 ml of solution over a period of 60 seconds. Slowly withdraw the syringe and when approximately half its length remain within tissue, then you re-aspirate. If negative, deposit a portion of remaining solution 0.2 ml to anesthetize the lingual nerve. So you can see the picture here. This is the pterygomandibular raphe. You are going at the level of occlusal plane bisecting the opposite side premolar and you are basically entering the pterygomandibular space or the triangle. Failure of anesthesia is deposition of LA below the mandibular foramen going too far anteriorly or too far posteriorly. Complication hematoma which is not as common but trismus if you are inserting into the medial pterygoid muscle. Transient facial nerve paralysis if you go too far posteriorly you are hitting the parotid gland damaging the facial nerve. Standard indirect technique. In this approach, the needle is advanced to contact the anterior border of the ramus. Syringe is then moved from the contralateral side to the ipsilateral side. The needle is advanced along the medial surface of the bone to the same depth recommended in the standard direct technique. You can see the picture here. The purpose of this approach is to ease the passage of needle between the ramus and the medial pterygoid muscle. That's where is the point of your injection and to reduce the risk of inadvertently penetrating the body of the muscle which may produce trismus. We are talking about the medial pterygoid muscle. Disadvantage of this technique, definitely it can be later to rate of inadequate anesthesia, inventory lead mark are not consistently reliable, lingual and lower lip anesthesia, partial anesthesia possible where there is a bifid IAN, cross innovation can always happen in lower interiors. Buccal nerve block. Provide buccal soft tissue anesthesia adjacent to the mandibular molar area. Not required for most restorative procedure. Technique is 25 gauge needle. Area of insertion is mucous membrane, distal and buccal to the distal molar. Target area is buccal nerve as passes over the anterior border of ramus. The nerve anesthetized by the long buccal nerve block is buccal nerve. 
and the ADNS size will be soft tissue and periosteum buccal to mandibular molar teeth. If you penetrate the mucous membrane, distal and buccal to the last molar, when you contact the bone, aspirate, the negative aspiration slowly deposit 0.3 ml over the 10 second time, withdraw the syringe and make the needle safe, wait for approximately 1 minute before commencing. Now we come to mental nerve blocks. You can see the area it is anesthetizing, the mental nerve block, needle penetration site, the mandibular second premolar area in the mucobuccal fold. Then you can see this is the incisive nerve block. The incisive nerve block is actually the mental nerve block component of it. To obtain lingual anesthesia after the incisive nerve block, insert the needle interproximally from the buccal and deposit anesthetic as the needle is advanced towards the lingual. Retract the tongue to gain access to and increase the visibility of lingual border of the nerve block. Now we are coming to a very important technique students that is called as the go gauge technique. Gogate technique is a true mandibular nerve block that provides sensory anesthesia for the entire distribution of the third division of trigeminal. It not only anesthetizes your inferior alveolar, lingual, mental, incisive, it also anesthetizes your myeloid, auricular temporal, and the buccal nerve. The significant advantage of Gogate technique over IANB, inferior nerve block, includes its higher success rate, its lower incidence of positive aspiration, and the absence of problem with accessory sensory innervation to the mandibular teeth, go gate block will effectively block it. You can see the picture here, the target area we are going to come to now. What are the area it is anesthetizing? The mandibular teeth to the midline, buccal periosteum anterior two-third of the tongue. The area it is anesthetizing is mandibular teeth to the midline, buccal periosteum anterior two-third of the tongue in floor of the mouth, lingual soft tissue in periosteum, body of the mandible, inferior portion of ramus, skin over the zygoma, posterior portion of the cheek and the temporal region. While well, the extra oral landmark is 25 to 27 gauge, long needles recommended. Locate the extra oral landmarks, intertracheal notch, corner of the mouth at the contralateral site. Visualize the intra landmarks. Landmarks will be mesiolingual or mesiopalatal cusp of the maxi second molar here. Needle penetration site is just distal to the maxi second molar at the height of the tip of its mesiolingual cusp. Prepare tissues at the site of penetration, direct the syringe towards the site of injection from the corner of the mouth, insert the needle gently into the tissues just itself to max the second molar at the height of its mesolingual or mesopalatal cusp. Align the needle with the plane extending from the corner of the mouth on the opposite side to the intertragic notch on the site of injection. You can see the picture here. Direct the syringe towards the target area on the tragus, the height of insertion above the mandibular occlusal plane is considerably greater 10 to 25 millimeter higher as compared to INB. So you are going basically around 1 centimeter to 2 centimeter superior to the pterygomandibular space. When a maxi thermal is present in a normal occlusion, the side of needle penetration is just distal to that. Slowly advance the needle up to 25 millimeter until bone is contacted. Aspirate in two planes, slowly direct deposit 1.8 ml of solution over 60 to 90 seconds of time. When directing the needle towards the tragus, the syringe barrel lies in the corner of the mouth over the three molars, but its position may vary from molars to incisor, depending upon the divergence of the ramus as assessed by angle of the ear. The angulation will be varying depending upon patient has a flat tragus, mildly divergent tragus or widely divergent tragus. Complication hematoma, trismus is not as common though. Temporary paralysis of cranial nerves, third, fourth and sixth can happen, lead to diplopia. Paralysis of the eye for 20 minutes, middle ear problems can be transiently happen. Course of 10 days, patient can complain of inner ear pressure, inability to equilibrate, decrease hearing, pain and severe headache before returning to normal without further complications. The cause of complication can be due to either hematoma, technique problem causing trauma, inflammation, anatomic variation or a combination of this. Students, now we are coming to another technique called as Vesireni Echinose Mandibular now blocking. It's also called as closed mouth technique. When the patient cannot open the mouth properly, say due to Christmas or if a child is uncooperative, not opening the mouth or you are not able to visualize the landmarks for INB because of large tongue. But if you have infection at the site, of course, you cannot give it. Technique is thinner needle 27 gauge. Position the patient supine or semi-supine. Ask the patient to occlude his or teeth gently. Reflect the soft tissue on the medial border of the ramus. Lightly with the mouth mirror, visualize the landmarks, which is mucogingival junction of the maxi third or second molar, maxi tuberosity, 
prepare the tissue at site of penetration and the barrel of the syringe is head parallel to the maxillary occlusal plane with the needle at the level of mucogingival junction of maxillary third molar. So there are no bony landmarks here, they are just landmarks as comparison to the reference of the tooth that is maxillary molar. Direct the needle posteriorly and slightly laterally orient the bevel away from the mandibular ramus. So you can see the picture here. It is advanced and it will posteriorly into the tissue on middle side of the mandibular ramus. You can see patient mouth is closed here. Advance the needle 25 millimeter in the tissue, measured from axillary to porosity approximately. And the tip of the needle should lie in the mid portion of the the branches of mandibular nerve, aspirate in two plane. If negative, deposit 1.5 to 1.8 ml over 60 seconds. The anesthesia usually occur within 60 to 90 seconds, wait for 5 minutes before the commencement of the procedure. Sign and symptoms, subjective, objective, both will be like I, A, and B. Precautions do not over insert the needle. Less needle penetration in a smaller patient. Failure in a CGI, if you are not directing the needle properly, you are directing it too medially or too low. Hematoma, less chances, transmus is also not that common. Now, let us talk about extra oral mandibular nerve block. Now, student, let us talk about the extra oral mandibular nerve block. So in this, the patient position is, the patient is placed in the supine position with the head and neck turned away from the site. The patient is asked to open and close the mouth gently while administrator palpates the mandibular notch. Needle puncture needle is inserted into the midpoint of the mandibular notch and directed to reach the lateral targoid plate by taking a slight medial angle through the notch. 22 gauge 8 cm needle will impinge on the lateral targoid plate at a depth of approximately 5 cm. Needle is then withdrawn and redirected in a small step to walk off the posterior part of lateral thyroid plate in a horizontal plane. You can see the picture here. That's a level for injection. When we talk about the potential problems that can happen with the external approach to the mandibular nerve, we require needle insertion through a vascular region. The hematoma formation is always a possible complication. More difficult to enter the foramen ovale from external approach must be constantly aware that if a needle is inserted through the foramen ovale into Meckel's cave, small dose of local anesthetic in the CSF can go and can produce unconsciousness of the patient. So, complication, needle breakage, prolonged anesthesia, facial nerve paralysis, ocular complication, trismus can happen, soft tissue injury, hematoma, burning, infection, edema, sloughing of tissue, post anesthetic intraoral lesion. Now, let us talk about some toxicities of systemic complications that can happen by direct extension of the usual pharmacological effect of the drug that is what is known as toxicity. So toxicity caused by alteration the recipient of the drug if the patient already has a renal dysfunction, liver damage patient, they have more chance of toxicity, genetic aberration, idiosyncratic reaction, emotional disturbances, so toxicity caused by allergic responses to the drug. So pre-convulsive sign and symptoms of central nervous system toxicity. Starting with slurred speech, shivering, muscular twitching, tremors, dizziness, visual disturbances, auditory disturbances, numbness, symptoms felt subjectively. Patient is feeling numbness of tongue, circumoral region, warm, flush feeling of skin. So, mild to moderate overdose of local anesthesia can lead to signs of talkativeness, apprehension, excitability, slurred speech, slutter, muscular twitching, euphoria, dysarthria, nystagma, sweating, vomiting. Elevated blood pressure, elevated heart rate, and elevated respiratory rate. Symptoms which progress with increasing blood levels. It can lead to restlessness, nervousness, dizziness, sensation of twitching before actual twitching is observed. Metallic taste, visual disturbances, tinnitus, artery disturbances, drowsiness, loss of consciousness. But moderate to high overdose level of local anesthesia will lead to tonic clonic seizure activity, followed by Depression, cardiovascular depression, respiratory depression, decreased blood pressure, decreased heart rate, decreased respiratory rate and can lead to death of the patient. So the maximum dose of local anesthesia, we can see for the articane, we are going 7 milligram. Patients who develop acute type 1 immediate hypersensitivity, let us say due to sulfur, sodium metabite sulfide in the local anesthesia or methyl parabene preservative that can also trigger uh, allergic response in the patient. The classic anaphylactic response would be seen that include respiratory distress, dyspnea, wheezing, arrhythmia, cyanosis, diaphoresis, tachycardia, increased anxiety. So early phases of skin reaction in a generalized anaphylaxis, itching, flushing, hives, nausea, conjunctivitis, vasomotor rhinitis, pilomotor erection, 
associated the skin response gi or gu disturbances nausea vomiting diarrhea severe abdominal cramp respiratory symptoms substernal tightness or pain in chest cough wheezing bronchospasm the condition is severe not able to breathe you will have cyanosis of the mucous membrane cardiovascular system is next to be involved which involve pallor lightheadedness palpitation tachycardia hypotension cardiac arrhythmia unconsciousness and cardiac arrest basic management is definitely you have to do cabd that is positioning the patient first unconscious supine with feet elevated slightly conscious based on patient comfort start with the circulation check airway as is maintain airway breathing ventilation if required and then the d that is definitive care calling 911 for the emergency management